glad to be for you one more time. I trust that God has been keeping all of us safely. And I praise God for all his manifold blessings in our lives. Um, let us turn to Acts, the book of Acts, for continued study of the book of Acts. I'm going to be in chapter uh, 13. And uh, I will um, just read verses 21 and 22 first. And afterward, they desired a, desired a king, and God gave unto them Saul, the son of Sis, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, by the space of forty years. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Of this seed hath David, at God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a Savior, Jesus. Praise God. So uh, Justin, last time, uh, spoke, touched on the uh, Paul's sermon here, and uh, and also went on to talk about a few things, few aspects of how the Jews uh, in each of these places that Paul and Barnabas went, um, especially here, how they were, you know, trying to destroy or stand against the word of work of God. And uh, Paul here in this passage that I just read, Paul uh, is giving a uh, message before the a gathering of the Jews in um, Antioch in a place called Pisidia. It's not the main Antioch that they started with. It's another Antioch, and as Justin mentioned, there were several Antiochs uh, that you see in that region. So anyway, so Paul is speaking this message, and, uh, and the verses I read are a part of the message that he read, uh, that he gave, and one of the things that Justin spoke about last time was how the Jews were driven by jealousy or envy, and uh, especially as they saw so many people were following after Paul and Barnabas, and they were so jealous, and they tried to break them up and persecute them. And you see this pattern again and again and again, uh, as you see uh, in Acts, the uh, book, uh, as we study his missionary journey. And Sometimes it is the same Jews. You see later that these Jews were later went to, I believe it was uh, Iconium. Uh, actually, it was Lystra. Uh, the uh, Jews from this uh, Antioch and Iconium went to Lystra and, uh, and told the people there to persecute Paul. So anyway, so they were driven by his envy. And, um, and they were here, it's, it even says they saw the multitude. And they saw and they were jealous. And because of this, they broke up uh, the work of Paul and Barnabas, where God was doing a wonderful thing in their midst. So Paul, in his message, kind of touched on what provoked them each time is how Paul called out their nature that was consistent with the Old Testament Jews. Okay, the Old Testament Jews were doing were no different than what the Jews were doing here today, that they rejected the ways of God. And, um, and they always wanted to seek out their own way, right? If you remember a few weeks ago, I spoke about this way is a narrow way, right? The way is Christ himself. That means following Christ himself is what we're called to do. And so anyway, so Paul again gave in his sermon addressed the thing that they were upset about. So, uh, so the verse that I read was talking about two different personalities who personified, who be, though these two persons represented everything that Paul was talking about. First was Saul, and the second was David. Okay, Saul was a king that was given to Israelites because they wanted a king just like 
Gentile, the other nation. They wanted to be just like them and have a king over them. And so they demanded a king to Samuel. And God said what? They didn't reject you. They rejected me. Right? And because they didn't want me to rule over them. So they asked for a king just like other Gentiles. And David, on the other hand, was a man after God's own heart. And God represented the way of God, the way of the Spirit. So Saul represents the way of the flesh. And David represents the way of the Spirit. And uh, as it says in Romans chapter 8, it says, If you live after the flesh, you will die. But if you live after the Spirit, to be spiritually minded is eternal life. So Saul and David, it's the same theme that you see throughout the Bible. In Galatians it says, what? The bond woman or the servant woman cannot live with uh, the son of the bond woman, cannot live with the son of promise. So that they had to kick out Ishmael out of the house so that Isaac can reign. It's a flesh and the spirit. The way of the flesh is seeking your own way versus the seeking or obeying the way of God. You all with me? Amen. Right? So, this Ishmael cannot reign. It's not that they couldn't have dwelled in the same house. Only one can reign. That's why Jesus said, you cannot serve God and you can't serve mammon. You can only serve one person. So, you can serve God or you can serve mammon. So, in Following the way of the Spirit also means following the way that God wants us to go. Whether it's in your personal life, whether it's in, uh, in your family, whether it's in your work, or whether it's in church. Every single aspect, as I said a few weeks ago, we have to say, I am crucified with Christ, yet now I do not live, but Christ lives in me. So that means when something happens to us, it shouldn't matter because I'm crucified. If somebody does something horrible, it doesn't matter because I'm crucified. Because Christ now lives in me. You all with me? So Saul and David, this tension has been in the Bible in different personalities. It is just representing what we are living as followers of Christ. Saul and David, Isaac and Ishmael, right? This last few weeks, we saw the tension physically in, in the Middle East, right? Isaac and Ishmael are still fighting, right? Thankfully, they came to a ceasefire. Uh, but this is the theme that we see in the Bible, Saul and David. So now, I wanted to highlight a few, couple of things related to that. Um, if you turn with me to uh, 1 Samuel Chapter 7. I want to read the first few verses. And the men of Kiriath Yerim came and fetched up the ark of the Lord and brought it into the house of Abinadab in the hill and sanctified Eliezer his son to keep the ark of the Lord. And it came to pass, while the ark abode in Kiriath Arim, that the time was long, and for it was twenty years. And all the house of Israel lamented after the Lord. So, the, so there's this back story here. I'm going to run through that real quick. Because this all started when Eli, who was a priest that where Samuel, who's a uh, Samuel was brought to the temple when Eli was priest, right? And he has two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, and they were wicked. Eli did not discipline his children, right? And they were wicked and they were doing evil things. They sought their own way. They did what they wanted to do. And so God not only punished Hophni and Phinehas, he also punished Eli and he also punished Israel because... The Philistines came and captured the Ark of the Covenant from their midst, which represented the glory of God amongst them, the presence of God amongst them. 
right? The Philistines came and took it. And so the whole story that they took it and put it in the temple of their God and their, the idols fell down and all of these things and they got, they got hemorrhoids and they got, many of them died. And then they realized, the Philistines, the Gentiles realized, oh, wow, this is powerful. I, we better send this back to the Israelites, right? So I'm not hitting all the story. And so they put it, they, they, they put it on a, a, an ox cart and put two cows and they just sent it, see where it goes. They said, okay, if it goes to Israel, then this was the problem that's happening to us, right? Sometimes do we realize the reason that we're troubled on every side may be because we're not following the way of the Lord, right? So that's the time to stop and think. Maybe do I need to reevaluate where I'm going, right? Do I need to examine where I'm going? So anyway, so they put the cart, the ark on this cart, and they sent it, <coughs> excuse me, uh, they sent it, and he came to the house of a man called Joshua. Um, and it was not the Joshua in Judges, it was a different Joshua. And he, it took the cart and he put it there and he did a lot of things that was not good. And and they even looked inside the car ark. They're not supposed to do that. They looked inside to see what's going on. And they, many of them died. And they were so scared because they just thought they could do what they wanted with the presence of God. That was the first mistake. Is that they forgot. Because the Philistines captured the ark, they forgot the commandments that God had given them. But God did not change who he is. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So when they saw, even though they forgot, when they did what they wanted to do, they died. And so they were so scared, and they sent the, the same thing, put it on a cart, and sent it to this person called Abinadab. Now it's sitting in his house, and he uh, put his son Eliezer in charge of it, to take care of it. And there was peace there in his house for a long time. So now, now this is, uh, my time is going very fast, so I'll say it very quickly. So then Saul came uh, as a king because the ark was gone. The presence was gone from amongst Israel. They lost their way and they, what? Wanted to become like everybody else. When the presence of God departs from our midst, from our churches, from our families, from our lives, we seek our own way. You all with me? We have to examine ourselves. As, God, as Moses said, I will not go unless you go with me. Are we examining ourselves? Is God in our lives? Is the presence of God in our lives? Or are we seeking our own way? You all with me? So anyway, so, um, so then they wanted Saul and they chose somebody that was not uh, according to God's own heart, as we spoke about earlier, right? So his first mistake after many years was that he, um, he was waiting for after, I believe it was after a battle, he was waiting for Samuel to come to do uh, a sacrifice. And he got impatient because he's a king. And he just did the sacrifice himself. Again, he chose his own way. Just because a pastor is late one day doesn't mean that somebody can just take over, right? You all with me? Okay, so, uh, so, so Samuel was late and he said, okay, I'm just going to do it myself. And so God cursed him and said, your kingdom is taken away from you today. Because I'm going to put a king after my own heart. You all with me? I am going to put a king after my own heart. And what does that mean? Because we read the same thing in Acts. It's a, the person who will want to do what I tell him to do. So now David, as we fast forward, he was a king. After, whenever he went to battle, he would ask God, can I go? And God will say, you can go. And another time he said, can I go? And God said, no. And he didn't go. So because of that, God was with him. He gave him victory every single time 
because he wanted to choose the narrow way. He wanted to choose the way of God. He did not rebel like Saul, right? So again, the way of the flesh and the way of the spirit. Saul and David, Ishmael and Isaac, Esau and Jacob, the son of the bondwoman cannot reign with the son of promise. You all with me? Okay, so now fast forward to 2 Samuel chapter 6. I'm going to finish very quick. <clears throat> and so, and David, again David, so 2 Samuel, so first we started with 1 Samuel chapter 7. Fast forward, and we read earlier, Saul was king for 40 years. And, um, and so after many, many years, now David is king. He won all these battles, and he realized the ark is not where I want it in, where I'm ruling. I want the presence of God where I am ruling. I want the presence of God where I make decisions. I want the presence and glory of God to be in the seat of power. This is what I'm talking about, the seat of your power in your life, where you make decisions. The presence of God has to rule, and David realized, I cannot be a king, I cannot serve him, unless the presence of God is in the seat of power. You all with me? The son of promise has to rule, which is the spirit of God. You all with me? Everybody's quiet today. Let me say a hallelujah. A praise God. Amen. All right. So now David, in second, uh, since my time is going, I'm, I'll just tell you the story. So David comes to 2 Samuel chapter 6, and he, he brings all his people and says, I'm going to bring the ark back from Abinadab's house. Remember back, in 1 Samuel, it's been in his house all these years. And Abinadab has two sons. His one was Uzzah and Ahio. Uzzah and Ahio. One of them is famous, for not for a good reason. And this story has always just been a problem for me because I could not grapple with what happened in the story. So what they did was, so when David came, I'm going to bring you know, bring the ark back. He brought all these people to play music, right? They were worshiping, and they're playing music and worshiping, and they made a new cart. And to put, uh, can you put up that first picture? And they put two oxen in front of it, right? So this was, so David, was, with great uh, enthusiasm, was going to bring the ark back. And they were worshiping and dancing and all these things. As they were going, so Abinadab's son, Ahio, was driving the cart. And, and his other son, Uzzah, was kind of make, making sure. Because remember, this ark has been in their family all these years. They grew up with the ark. They, every, they probably tended to it, took care of it. They felt like this ark is belonged to my family. That was another mistake, Right? that it's not a family business, the things of God. It's not, say it after me, it's not a family business. You all with me? So anyway, so they, this is what they were used to, and, they, and as he followed the oxen, of course, as the oxen are tend to do, they kind of shook the ark a little bit, and Uzzah immediately was afraid that this ark that they took care of was going to be shattered, and they were afraid. And he immediately touched the ark to stop it from falling. And we know what happened next. The anger of God came down upon Uzzah and he died immediately. And so, um, the, so then David, when he saw this, because he had given God many victories, he, was, he thought he knew God. He thought God was his, you know, he was a servant of God. He was, after all, a man after God's own heart. He was so scared. He's like, man, maybe I didn't know God. What happened? And he left the ark 
in another person's house called Obededom, and he went back. And, and then he came back three months later to bring the ark back. Now let's talk about what happened. Why did Uzzah die? Why did Uzzah die? Was it wrong for David to bring back the ark? No, it was not. What was wrong for them to sing and worship when they brought back the ark? It was not. Where they went wrong was they put the ark on a man-made cart. They put the ark, and the ark was driven by two oxen. What did God say how they should transport the ark? What did God say? I can't hear you. Priests, anointed priests of God should transport the ark. Amen? So when David went back, he probably realized his mistake. He's like, he probably understood, this is where I went wrong, because the people, the Israelites, the people of God, was following what they saw the Philistines do. They made a new one. They didn't reuse their cart, but they made a new one and put new, brand new oxen. But it was still wrong. You all with me? That's why God is not a respecter of persons. God is not a respecter of persons. That means even David can do mistakes. Even David can go wrong. But the reason that he was a man after God's own heart was because he was willing to change. He was willing to allow the Spirit of God to transform him. I'll invite the worship team to come up. Go to the next slide. He came back and he brought the priests of God's, and it looks a little uh, disturbing, but that's what he did. He came back and he was a king, but he was willing. He told his wife, who was embarrassed of him, he said, See, I am willing to be ashamed even more than this because the ark is coming back to the seat of power. And every six steps, he did a sacrifice. And, and they were worshiping. And it's, not, it's not wrong to worship and praise and sing songs. But the question is, are we doing it the way God wants us? Are we allowing God to rule in our families, in our churches, in, in our personal lives? Whatever we do, are we doing it in the way of God? And this was the same thing they struggled with in the Old Testament times and in the New Testament times. And Abinadab's children, that's what they grew up with. What is our children going to grow up with? Are we teaching them that the church should be guided by anointed priests of God? Are we teaching them our lives should be anointed and led by the Spirit? Are we putting the things of God on a man-made cart? man-made laws and rules? Or are we putting it on the shoulders of anointed priests? You all with me? And he came back with great... And there's no point, just like in the time of Uzzah, there's no point worshiping and singing songs and being joyful if you still put the ark on a man-made cart. You all with me? But God is pleased when we follow him the way he told us to follow him. And let us come back to that. And I'll just say one more uh, passage. It's, uh, I won't read it, but it's in 1 Samuel uh, chapter 13. So Saul, again, the man of the flesh, he made this rule that he said, there'll be curse anybody who doesn't, who eats today. Okay, and he made this arbitrary rule, random rule. It doesn't make any sense. And they were fighting battles, and he said, anybody who eats today will be cursed. And his son, Jonathan, he was hungry. He didn't know this rule. And he went and found some honey in the rock, which is Jesus, right? He found this honey in this rock, and he ate it, and he was refreshed, and his eyes were enlightened. And he says, why did my father make this rule? Because my eyes are now enlightened. The same way, just because Uzzah grew up with that, or just because Jonathan was the son of Saul growing up in the house of flesh doesn't mean that it is too late for us. Let us reach 
into the cross. Let us put our hands up to be nailed to the cross and taste of this honey which is in the rock. Let our eyes be enlightened so that our lives may be led by the Spirit. May his name be glorified.